calculations in chemistry can be very tough, and the amount of substance questions in a chemistry A-level exam always typically provide quite the challenge. This is the first in a series of videos where I'm going to provide you with an exam style question like the one you can see on screen now and then give you a full walkthrough of how I would answer the question in an exam. My recommendation is that you have a go at the question that you can see on screen now, so screenshot it or find the link to the question in the video description and then come back again to this video for the full walkthrough. This is a particularly complicated exam question because the whole scenario is split across three stages. In the first stage, a 0.5 gram impure ammonium chloride sample is warmed with an excess of sodium hydroxide solution. Now, doing this reaction would produce ammonia, and the ammonia liberated is absorbed into 25 centimeters cubed of 0.2 mol per decimeter cubed sulfuric acid solution. But it turns out that that amount of sulfuric acid would actually be an excess. And in fact, the excess of sulfuric acid, so the amount that doesn't react, requires 5.64 centimeters cubed of 0.2 mol per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide solution for titration. So what you've got to do effectively is work through the three stages in the reverse order to calculate the percentage of ammonium chloride in the original sample. The reaction equations in the three stages aren't given either, and you have to know a lot of these from study of A-level chemistry. For example, the first equation is actually taught in the qualitative analysis section of the OCRA specification, and can be shown as this ionic equation, so rather than using ammonium chloride, I'm just using ammonium here, I've got ammonium ions reacting with hydroxide ions from the sodium hydroxide to produce ammonia and water. In the second stage, I've got ammonia reacting with sulfuric acid to make ammonium sulfate. Careful with the balancing on this one and with the formula of the product. And then in the third equation, I've got sodium hydroxide reacting with sulfuric acid to make sodium sulfate and water. Knowledge of these equations is how you're really going to access the deeper level of the question. And without knowing all of the stoichiometry involved here, you won't be able to make much progress with the calculation. As I described before with the calculation, we're going to go through the process in the reverse direction, starting off with the sulfuric acid and sodium hydroxide described in what I've labeled as the third stage of this. What we're doing here with the calculation is using the information in the question about sodium hydroxide to calculate its moles and then use that mole value and the stoichiometry of the balanced reaction equation to find out the moles of the sulfuric acid that were in excess. So, my number of moles of the sodium hydroxide is equal to 1.128 times 10 to the power of negative 3 mol, and then using the ratio in the equation between the sulfuric acid and the sodium hydroxide, I can divide the sodium hydroxide moles by 2, and that gives me the number of moles of the sulfuric acid that were in excess after stage 2, which is 5.64 times 10 to the power of minus 4 moles. Now that I've calculated the number of moles of sulfuric acid that were left in excess after stage two by using the information in stage three, I can calculate the number of moles of sulfuric acid that reacted with the ammonia in stage two. The number of moles of sulfuric acid available in stage two can be calculated by doing concentration times volume, and that's the concentration of 0.2 multiplied by the volume of 25 centimeters cubed over a thousand to give me five times 10 to the power of negative three mol of sulfuric acid available in stage two. Then what I need to do is subtract from this value the amount of sulfuric acid in moles that I've determined was left in excess after stage two took place. So that's five times 10 to the power of negative three minus 5.64 times 10 to the power of negative four. And that means that the amount of sulfuric acid in moles that did react in stage two with the ammonia is 4.436 times 10 to the power of negative three mole. Now, using the balanced reaction equation, I can go from the H2SO4 across to the ammonia, so I can use this mole value for the sulfuric acid to determine the number of moles of ammonia that reacted with it. 
Since the ratio is 2 to 1, so that's the 2NH3 to the 1H2SO4, what I'm going to do now is double my H2SO4 mole value, and that's going to tell me the number of moles of ammonia that I was using in stage 2. The value for the number of moles of ammonia is 8.872 times 10 to the power of minus 3 mol. And this is equal to the number of moles of ammonia that must have been produced in stage 1. Finally here, as you can see, we've worked our way all the way to the top, back to stage 1. And we have here the ionic equation for the reaction of the ammonium ions with the hydroxide ions to produce the ammonia and water. The ratio here between the ammonium ions and the ammonia is 1 to 1. So what I can therefore state is the number of moles of ammonia that I know were reacting in stage 2 must be equal to the number of moles of ammonium ions that were used here in stage 1. So that value is 8.872 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And since every ammonium chloride provides me with an ammonium ion, I can also say that this is equal to the number of moles of NH4Cl. We are very nearly there, so what we need to do now is convert this mole value for the ammonium chloride into a mass value. And we do that by doing moles times molar mass. The molar mass of the ammonium chloride is 53.5 grams per mole, as identified earlier in the question. And what I need to do is moles times that value to get the mass in grams of the ammonium chloride in the impure sample. As you can see, that mass value of ammonium chloride is 0.4747 grams. So for the final stage of this, I need to take this mass value and divide it by the mass value of the impure sample and then multiply by 100 to calculate the percentage by mass of ammonium chloride in the impure sample. That value comes out as 94.9%. And we're done. Thanks very much for watching everybody. If you'd like to see more of this style of video, then please make sure you give this one a like before you go so I know to keep making them. If you'd also like to watch me go through other exam style questions or perhaps to see the next video in this series, there are lots of links on screen now and in the video description to all of my content. Until next time, happy revising.